like you screen test for a part in Hollywood and you don't get it and they say like they've gone in a different direction and then you see the article release about who got cast and it's a white actor but I think it was such a shock to see like a dumb blonde character like in my inbox but I did my audition and I shut my laptop and I was like there's no way I'm getting this I think like until the day I showed up to rehearsals and like Tina Fey was in the office next to me I, I like couldn't actually process that there was something that was happening this show won't really sell like audiences won't watch it if a woman of color is playing the lead all those politics are so predominant in Hollywood even now women like Raja Kumari have kind of paved the way and made it a lot easier, easier yeah. for people my age and Correct. South Asian women my age. I guess to see Shah Rukh Khan like on your second day of like ever being in the industry is like a wild experience to yeah. have. It was like for once I'm just being seen as an actor and as a, as a Vantaka and for my work ethic and for my talent rather than like all these politics behind the color of my skin. Welcome to Humans of Bombay Avantika. So lovely to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. And such an exciting time for you. The Mean Girls movie has just dropped. Yes. And uh, so iconic. I was just telling you <laughs> offline that I was... We were trying to find pink, you know, being like... Yes, yes. <laughs> and then we drop it on a Wednesday and be like, on Wednesdays we wear pink. <laughs> the coordination is too much, clearly. Yeah, but no, it was just like, okay, now forget the color. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we made something happen. Yeah, how was the experience and like for having a childhood dream to be an actor and then being part of such an iconic franchisee how was it i think it was like crazy obviously um i think the experience was the experience was amazing yeah. I think to start with the f fact that it was like so unexpected yeah. um how did it happen i got an email in my inbox saying like hey mean girls musical is casting and they want to see you for karen which also for me like felt really weird yeah. because I was like if anything I'd probably audition for like Gretchen like okay. someone who has dark brown hair and yeah. like was played by an Asian person on Broadway like I I, I would have felt that that was more what you, they would have seen yeah. for me um but I think it was such a shock to see like a dumb blonde character like in my inbox um and I had to sing for the audition okay. and I I'm like exclusively a Shah singer yeah. and so I was obviously like really really no. nervous yeah. um but I did my audition and I shut my laptop and I was like, there's no way I'm getting this. And I didn't hear back for like four months. And typically in Hollywood, like you don't hear back for a month and you've like put yeah. the kind of chapter to rest in yeah. your head. Um, and four months later, I was filming in Serbia for a film and I got a call being like, they'd like to offer you the part. Wow. So it was like very unexpected and really surreal. I think like until the day I showed up to rehearsals and like Tina Fey was in the office next to me, I, I like couldn't actually process that there was something that was happening. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> it happens. Magic happens. Yes, 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 yes for sure. <laughs> you have to believe. <laughs> but you grew up in California. And yes. um, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a whole different experience. And just being a part of a different world where you're Indian, but in California. Yeah. How was that? How was growing up like for you? I think it was, it was honestly really, really Indian. Okay. Because I grew up in the Bay Area. Hmm. And the Bay Area has like a lot of immigrants. And it's fully dominated by like, tech and it's Silicon Valley yeah. and it's like software engineers so like every almost everybody I lived with and like three cities past was like Asian yeah 80% of no them were brown okay and so it was felt really really Indian and I think because almost everyone there was an immigrant like everyone really holds on to their culture more so than I've noticed that they do here yeah um and so I think in a way I had kind of felt limited in my childhood in Bay Area that I felt like I was being societally forced into like a career pathway that did not align with who I felt like I was. In terms of? Like like software or right. tech or like, STEM. Yeah, like something related to one of those like serious fields. Yes, yes, right. for sure. And I think there's this pressure also as like children of immigrants to yeah. like make the most of what your parents have like given you and to not kind of throw away this opportunity that they have taken so much risk to provide for you and obviously I think coming into the entertainment industry is in in a lot of ways like throwing that away because it's not a guaranteed career mm -hmm. um, and it's a really like unsure path but my parents were really supportive of me wanting to act and so Soon after we came to Hyderabad mm. and I think Hyderabad was where I like started to like blossom as my own yeah. 
individual because yeah. I was homeschooled in Hyderabad. I was on film sets all the time. Like I had space to grow as my own person, and there was no mm-hmm. like external pressure of from school or from my peers of like this is what we're doing. This is what you should yeah. do. You know. It's so interesting that you know if you mentioned that you were homeschooled and it's such a like foreign concept for a lot of people because yeah. it's like you know people are constantly debating the the construct of like you need to send a child to school for like the social element of yes, it. Yes, yes. Um but in fact a lot of studies say that a child who's homeschooled and has uh other curriculars that that they have the social interaction which is turn out the same like it's it's yes. pretty much the same mm-hmm. um for them. How was your experience of being homeschooled in hyderabad and do you think that that contributed to how holistic um you were in your approach to life while growing up i honestly say i had like the perfect balance like i was i went to regular school until i was fifth, in in fifth grade mm-hmm. and then i did homeschooling for a few years and then i went back to high school mm-hmm. and then i did hybrid high school for a while and now i'm in college in person so right. like i've kind of had like this multitude of experiences throughout my life so i wouldn't know what it feels like to kind of be homeschooled your entire life and mm-hmm. your only kind of social experiences from curriculars right. or like from going yeah. to set or something like that but i would say that having interaction with peers my own age and then being kind of uprooted from that and then being forced to i guess mingle with adults and and place myself in an environment like that was actually a really really good push for yeah. me um and i think it like improves your world view so so much sure. and i think it's really beneficial for children to be in like a spectrum of environments when they're younger mm-hmm. and i also think that's why like montessori schools where schools that force your kid to learn different things mm-hmm. are also like cool um but i don't regret it one bit i think this is like notion from a lot of people who are foreign to the industry of like you threw away your childhood and in fact i think i lived my childhood in a much more fulfilling way than i probably would have in like a standard school yeah. um setting yeah and very early on you had this amazing life experience of being on set with very very prominent actors right like from samantha to kajal agarwal on the set of your film how is that experience and like were you um were you at all intimidated from the fact that like now you're in the public eye and that can be daunting right for like a child who just wants to kind of have like some semblance of normalcy while growing up i feel like when a work day starts for me like mm. i kind of just place myself outside of like my body as a vantaka and i think that has started from a young age itself so when i went to set maybe the first day i would say i was nervous but after that i think i just kind of felt like i was there i was doing my job and I also credit that very much to Samantha and and Kajal and the fact that they really are not these like I guess like they don't they don't behave like celebrities, like, celebrity, yeah. like they're really grounded people and they're really wonderful to work with and um I remember we were filming in Uti for something and Kajal was like sitting with her glasses and like no makeup and her hair was like curly and she was sitting on a phone call and I saw the back of her head so I didn't know it was her and I just like sat next to her and she was on a phone call and she just said hi to me and like she didn't make me feel like I was intruding in her space and I think with taught to view celebrities especially indian celebrities on such a pedestal that even a gesture like that felt really kind and yeah. it definitely was and so I think they were really incredible people and for me also as a young actor I think it set a really great example for good set etiquette and yeah. like good work ethic yeah. um yeah any fun experiences with this with the with the crew that you still remember whether it's Mahesh Babu Samantha or Kajal that you you still like oh that was a fun thing that happened I remember when we were filming Brahmotsavam which was the film mm, they were yeah. they were all on um Shahrukh Khan and Kajol um they were also filming uh Oh gosh, it's like my name my... is Khan? No, 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 oh. they were not filming my name is Khan. Um much later they were filming um Dilwale? Yeah, I think they were yeah. filming Dilwale. Yeah, they were filming Dilwale and we were all filming in Ramoji Film City so they had come to visit set and this was my th- I think my like second day on set. This is like my first film, my first experience and I grew up on Bollywood more than I did on Tollywood and like I guess to see Shahrukh Khan like 
on your second day of like ever being in the industry is like a wild experience to yeah. have and i remember the crew and i we were all like so starstruck um and i had just filmed this scene like when i was um riding a horse and so like mahesh babu sir was like helping me off the horse and shahrukh khan sir had like walked in and i was like this is like a like a wild what like, is happening in my life what is happening in my life experience yeah. Yeah, like, yeah yeah but yeah i think that is like a cool memory it? yeah yeah i yeah. did i did. i shook hands it was <laughs> like enough for me yeah it's like i'm good i'm good <laughs> second day on set it's a it's a good day at the it's office day, yeah, yeah it's a good day at the office yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then obviously you went on to do like a couple of films and shows and then it was spin that you yes. did with disney what yeah. was the, what was the difference in experiences when it came to um this trajectory right that you followed i guess spin was like my first film where i had to like shoulder a film mm. on my like predominantly and so i and i was really excited to kind of do that also working with like a south asian fe- female director for the first time yeah. was was really cool um because i guess i really thought that my experience in hollywood was going to be quite uh, um quite a departure from i guess my experience as like an indian american yeah. um but i guess my first big film for that to be something that felt close to my culture felt mm. really special and also with disney which i think like so many kids like grow yeah. up watching disney channel yeah. films and you, you dream of it's that it's legacy it's yeah. pretty much yeah, legacy yeah. Yeah. um so i was i was really really happy yeah yeah so you know it's very interesting that you mentioned that you were working with like a south asian director and yeah. how that kind of that experience shaped you we were speaking with raja kumari last yes, year yes yes and uh, you know she spoke a lot about this that uh, you know being a woman who's south asian and you know she wears her culture on her sleeve yes, she loves 100%. it and she celebrates love, it yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's like you know that has been looked down upon in the west for me and that was her personal experience what has that experience been like for you have you faced anything that that's similar right like where you felt like you know just by by being sometimes you know by being bracketed as a particular category i definitely experienced it when i was a childhood hmm. like i think even just something as small as like wearing a pottu or like a bindi i think i guess there maybe i was made to feel a little bit like oh like what is she doing but in the industry i think hollywood has kind of taken on a new path of like representation and embracing diversity um So I've never I I I I've not faced it to the extent which I think she would face because I think the fundamental difference is I think Raj Kumari is like predominantly in music and yeah. I think in music they're so um keen on I guess setting a brand to an artist whereas with an actor like the job their job is to literally play different people Correct. and so it's harder I guess to put an actor into a box than it is for a musician yeah. so I would see how her experience would be I guess a little bit more um a little bit more leaning that side correct um but i wouldn't say that mine has been that drastic and i also think that women like raju kumari um have kind of paved the way and made it a lot easier, easier yeah. for people my age correct. and south asian women my age yeah. um so i think credit must be given where credit's due yeah. for sure yeah. yeah and what about the overall experience right because you're in such a you're in such a dichotomy like for, you're doing like telugu films in hyderabad and then you're a south asian woman suddenly in california or new york wherever you are mm-hmm. right so uh, how has that played out like the just a dichotomy of like am i this or am i that like is it like a little bit of a conflict or for you it's like very like it's fine i'm i'm seamless right like i can just float in and out of these roles i think from in my head it's n- never really been a conflict like i've always kind of seen myself as as a whole being yeah. and i credit that a lot to my parents and how they kind of created my household environment mm-hmm. which was that your experience is like in and of itself like it, it's it's pointless to put an experience that in and of itself is so unique into a box that right. doesn't exist yet yeah. um and so i wouldn't say that there's this been this kind of conflict but for sure there's been this like dichotomy i would mm-hmm. say absolutely yeah. um i think walking in india like everyone is indian and yeah. um all your parts are indian and so that's interesting because there's no trope or stereotype you're backing into as an actor yeah. um whereas in america and you're like planning your career trajectory mm-hmm. there you have to be conscious of the fact that you don't want to be pigeonholed into a certain so stereotype. stereotype um and that the roles sometimes tend to be like 
a doctor or a nurse or a taxi driver when you're talking about South Asians. Um, and so I think being conscious of that has been, I guess, to the extent of which I've experienced this kind of dichotomy, like you're saying. Right. Yeah. Right. So do you feel a certain sense of responsibility, you know, to represent the culture? I do. I do feel I do feel that responsibility. Um, I think maybe initially I didn't feel it as much, but I guess when people are telling you that like this meant so much to them that that responsibility like sinks in a little bit more. Mm. Um, but I also feel a bigger responsibility to my generation, which I would say we're all quite multicultural, even if you're taking like Gen Z youth that's been born and brought up in India, there's such a heavy Western influence. Um, and when you're re referencing like South Asian Gen Z youth in America, there's a really big um, conscious effort to like incorporate their culture in like, small things, even if it goes so far as like, you shouldn't be saying chai tea, like it's chai. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like even like things like that. And yeah. so I think embracing that and like my identity as someone who is part of both cultures um, and making sure that like mm. my work and my perception of of how people perceive me is reflective of the fact that I am both I Correct. think is a bigger priority than just I guess screaming from the rooftops like I'm South Asian, I'm South Asian. yeah I'm South please Asian. take me seriously yeah yeah, yeah. I can yeah. see that I yeah. can understand that what about Bollywood how do you feel about being in Bollywood do you have any aspirations what would you like to do like the kind of work that you would like to do I'm like really excited to be here. I'm really, <laughs> really happy to be here because um, when I worked in Tollywood, I was I was so young mm. and I left to America when I was like 14. And this is my, I guess, return back five years later to the Indian film industry. But to now experience that in Hindi, which like I've grown up watching, yeah. I think is really, really exciting. Yeah. Um, and I would obviously love to work in Telugu as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but, you began there. <laughs> it's a full circle right, moment. Exactly. Yeah, and right. it's my mother tongue. Um, yeah. And so... I don't know, I'm, I'm really excited to kind of explore India as a film industry, like now as an adult. Mm. Um, I'd love to do like films in Bollywood, obviously. Like, yeah, of um, course. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you grow up watching like Aditya Chopra and yeah. like and Bansali yeah. and um, I just, I think it's like a great industry and especially now with like OTT mm. and, and so many newer directors coming up that there's so many stories here to tell. And like I was saying, there's no trope to back into when everybody is Indian, right? Mm. You're not running that risk mm. in the Indian film industry. You get to tell nuanced Indian stories yeah. without being, I guess, stripped of that nuance. Yeah. And so I'm excited to explore that. Um, and I have a show coming out in yeah. to, in, two, in a few days. Yeah. Um, probably by the time this interview is out, it'll, it'll be out. So exciting, um, yeah. But that'll be kind of, I guess, my first foray. Yeah. In, into, in, into Hindi. Into Hindi. Yeah. 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 Do you feel comfortable in Hindi? I'm like okay in Hindi. I'm, okay. I'm fine. Like okay. I was good. I, it was okay enough for the show. Sure, and like, yeah, the, like it, it flew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think in Bombay, I feel a little conscious because I'm like <laughs> everyone can tell that I'm a South Indian <laughs> speaking Hindi. <laughs> like and, God. and so it's like more a concern that you can hear my South Indian accent. Not all. It's like I mean, I, I feel like you know, it's sometimes it's just in our head, right? The narrative. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. It is what yeah, it is yeah, in that yeah. sense. But let's talk about Mean Girls again. Um, you know, there was a lot of uh, Twitter chatter about the fact that there was a brown girl being yeah. one of the leads. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of like a conflicted opinion, right? Like yeah. on whether is it is it the right thing, is it the wrong thing? Mm -hmm. um, how did you feel about just the banter around the fact that, you know, this is, firstly, this is even a conversation. But it right. is, now that yeah, it yeah. is a conversation, yeah. how did you yeah, feel yeah. about it? I guess I think it's like kind of amusing mm. that there was this big of a conversation around something that I didn't think I guess was supposed to be that argumentative um, or supposed to be that provocative. Um, but I think like the one question was like, oh, are you like affected by this hate? And my primary response to that is most of the hate that stemmed from, oh, she was cast in this film was like so blatantly like racist that it's quite easy to kind of just dismiss because it's like, it's, when someone has fundamentally an issue with the color of your skin, like there's nothing you can do about it and there's yeah. nothing you can be offended about regarding it. Yeah, we're in 2024. Um, like how exactly. is this conversation still 100%. happening? 100%. Yeah. Um, and so I think when there's nothing that I can change about myself to make you happy, there's no reason for me to be offended also. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Um, I always like 
read i i do read I, i've gotten off of twitter now um oh, post, post, i i deactivated twitter yeah like, yeah yeah post film release like i've i've it, uh, before films really the mean girls is released it was like quite manageable but now post the films release it's i like, guess yeah. i was like i can't do it um but i do read like critics as reviews and so i think when like comments are made in regards to like performance or this and that like those are notes that i can take and like digest but back to like whatever the discourse was around my casting when it's something like that i can't change yeah. there's nothing for me to take yeah. away from that but did it bother you the response i would say was like 80% positive and okay. that i think is a big leap in the right direction yeah. you'll take that i'll take that yeah. i'll take that win yeah yeah do you do you feel like this is something that you faced before like you know where you're mistreated because of the color of your skin and because so many indians do face not even just indians like so many people of color do face that around yeah, the world yeah i think i faced it more so when i was younger i think going to school like kids can be really really brutal um and i guess that it was far more in hurtful. your face in yeah. my face and yeah. it was like i guess I, i was a kid and you don't know what you're dealing with and so it feels a lot more aggressive I guess in my later years where I've experienced that is like you screen test for a part in Hollywood and you don't get it and they say like oh, they've gone in a different direction and you were one of three people that were screen testing for this part because it's like the final stage of before an actor books it and then you see the article released about who got cast and it's a white actor I think it's like easy to tell that it's like corporate politics of like oh this show won't really sell like audiences won't watch it if a woman of color is playing the lead like it's more marketable to cast a white face and then we can cast a brown person as like a supporting character or mm-hmm. you know what i mean like all those politics are so predominant in hollywood even now that i think something like that i guess stings a yeah. little bit differently than like when you're younger and it's so blatant and in your face but i would still say that it kind of like stems from the same philosophy school of thought and, yeah yeah, yeah. I, and as kids you can still be like a kid is naive right like you're not yeah. you're not well aware as like a human being to be like that's racist like yeah, as kids exactly. you, you you don't know that yeah you're doing that right. which i think should definitely change because 100%. you 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 condition a child to know these yes. very basic yes. things yes yes but as adults it's like you have all the knowledge like yeah. and racism is like such a huge deal across the world and like it's a constant conversation yeah. piece uh, and of course there is a priyanka chopra who's doing it and who's playing like lead roles but like it's still very few yes. um so when things like this happen like does it make your resolve stronger to be like let me act my way through this like if i'm a talented actor i should be considered and taken for the part and i can prove that or yeah. does that kind of make you feel like let me just let it be 100% 100% i think it drives any like person of color in hollywood's resolve to know that some kind of politics like this was the reason why they didn't get a part um it's which is why i was so happy when they like took the decision to cast me yeah. for for karen because for once it felt like you took me because i was the best person in the room and i remember even when i showed up to rehearsal they had all of our pictures stuck up on a wall um of like Renee Rapp playing Regina and like all of our pictures and everyone had their headshot and i was the only person who had um a screenshot from my self tape mm-hmm. up there instead of my headshot and i like went to our directors and i was like why is that I'm, i'm curious and they were like because we just thought you were so perfect and like that face you made in your audition like embodies the character so perfectly that we just like wanted to put it up there and like it was like for once i'm just being seen as an actor and as a as a vantaka um and for my work ethic and for my talent rather than like all these politics behind the color of my skin and and what i bring to the film like yeah. k- what kind of market i pull etc etc mm-hmm. um and i think also part of the reason why i like really want to be a producer and really want to make a mark there and i sold a show to disney as well yeah. and like wanted to make that choice and start a production company was because like i think the biggest way you can really take storytelling into your hands in hollywood is like either as a writer or a producer right. um but yeah hmm very interesting 
And how do you balance all of this with college? <laughs> You're still in college. By the way, my dream college, uh, Columbia, which I've really wanted to <laughs> in life go to, but like maybe at some point in life again. No, you absolutely yeah, should. At some point in life, you, you know, like I'll, I'll go back to school. You but, should, you um, should. How's that? And does this, like, are you like a campus sensation? Are people like, oh my God, that's the, that's the mean girl's girl? No, no, no. I, don't, I don't think so. No. Um, I think everybody at Columbia is like very accomplished yeah. in their own way. And I also think everybody at Columbia knows that they're accomplished yeah. in their own way. Yeah. So nobody is like giving anybody the <laughs> like benefit. Of being like, wow. Yeah, yeah, nobody's giving anybody the benefit of being like, I'm fangirling yeah, over you. Yeah, like yeah. everybody, like, everybody thinks like, they're I'm too their cool. Fan. I'm my own fan. Everybody yeah. thinks they're too cool, which I get. Everyone's really accomplished and really talented. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess balancing it with it is obviously hard. Like right now I'm on like a temporary leave of absence because like traveling and like coming to yeah. India and like all of this was going to be impossible. And so I definitely think like certain sacrifices have to be made. Yeah. But I am also like happy to do that and like be mm. in a position where I have to pick between like an opportunity to go to my dream school versus like come to India to promote like a show that I'm so excited to have been a part of like it's yeah a dilemma that I'm like more than happy to it's a good take. dilemma I, I'm yeah. more than happy to yeah. be a part of it like yeah. you you have two very good choices yes. so it's yes. life is good yes. in that sense 100%. so what is what does womanhood mean to you right like now that you're at the cusp of like finally you know at the breakout point where you've been taken seriously for your talent and uh you're scaling a new height in your career, obviously still studying, but like doing so many amazing, wonderful things. Um, what is it that it, what does it mean for you, right? That you're you're a woman who's achieving this and like, what does womanhood effectively mean to you? Keeping all of these contexts in mind. Uh, I guess womanhood to me at, at this point in time is like, I guess with this many things on my plate, it's been like a little bit of a journey like the past year or so to kind of figure out my place in the world and like what kind of yeah. value I feel like I bring mm -hmm. um, and um, figuring out my sense of self and my identity. And also like I think when an actor or any public figures like career trajectory starts to like take off a yeah. little bit, like you're faced with this overwhelming feeling of I'm being perceived and like people are telling you who you are constantly and so I think I feel like I'm still young and so navigating like and discovering who I am despite all of that noise I think has been a little bit of a journey so I don't know if I'm qualified enough to mm. say like what, what it woman because yeah. I would frankly I would say like I don't know yeah um I so what is the grounding factor in your life right like when everybody's telling you who yeah. you are and it's like it can be overwhelming yes you know um what is what are the grounding factors what are the what are the influences in your life that impact you to be who you are today? To be who I am today, I would say family and is a big, big thing. Right now, I think as a young person in this world, I think for a lot of young people, the grounding factor is their friends. Yeah. And I would say like my friends are like my grounding factor. I live in New York, like I live alone. And so my friends and like the people that I surround myself with and the people I choose to like work creatively with and like write with these are like my chosen family and so I would say that there are the space in which I feel comfortable to just be myself yeah. in and I know that I'm being perceived just for, for that, that yeah. um, and I'm being loved just for that so I think that has been the biggest grounding factor, factor for me yeah. yeah yeah that's 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 a good way to look at it <laughs> <laughs> and what next what are you excited about I have a film coming out yeah. in the summer yeah. called Taro, mm. um, which is like my first horror film in America. And so I'm really, really excited because horror is like my favorite genre really? of all time. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited. Okay. Um, so that is also a theater release. So it feels like really surreal to have like two theater releases okay. yeah. in a year, like post pandemic. pandemic. The show I sold to Disney, I'm like, we're in development right mm. now. And so I'm really excited to see where that goes. Um, I think like this year, after Tara releases, like I would really like to prioritize like a career here and like exploring that because mm -hmm. I feel like the whole of like the last five years have been dedicated seriously to working there. And now that I feel like I've kind of made a space there for myself, like I can keep one foot there and like start to there. start to like venture here. Yeah. And so I'm really excited at that for that prospect. Um, 
and I'm also writing for the first time in my life. Oh. Like I never thought yeah. that I could write and like be a writer. But again, I guess my friends have inspired me, and like my experiences have felt really cool. And I want to kind of um, memorialize them in some way, even if it's just mm. for myself. And so, writing, and hopefully, I'd like to sell another project this year. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so all these are great things from a career like next stage level, right? What about you? Like, what about Vantika, the person? What do you want to do for fun? What is the what's the plan there to like when you're not working, when you're not in front of the camera, when you're not writing? I guess like when you're doing a career that you love, you wa- love and you want to do, yeah. like everything does feel like quite fun. Like yeah. when you're up at two a.m. at like a friend's house and you guys are writing and like. Chatting and making jokes over, and there's this big fat like whiteboard. It, it really just does feel like you're doing like a group project with a bunch of friends, and yeah. like it does feel fun. And yeah. so, I would say also I think going to college was really important for yeah. me to like form an identity outside of my work because right. I think my identity was so intertwined with just my career for yeah. so long yeah. that college gave me a space and like. Like now I like do boxing and I like <laughs> have gone back to dancing and like. Yeah. Enjoy cycling and like mm. have started developing all these like small hobbies outside of just, just work. Outside of just work, and so I think spending time with friends, whether that be in the capacity of work <laughs> or outside of that, um, and like reading, watching movies. I love going to the theater, yeah. and um, New York is very like. New York is a little pretentious, but they love their like culture. So they all they always have their like mini theaters, like the mini art theaters, mm. where they're like playing like some exclusive random French film. Yeah. Um, and so I love like going there uh, for fun. But you know, there's lo- there's lots of things. That yeah, it sounds fun. It all sounds fun. <laughs> well, I'm excited for you, and this has been such a fun interview, and <laughs> yeah. um, really like excited for everything that you're building, and more power to you, kind of. Thank you. Um, showcasing and wearing your talent on your sleeve. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you so much for, for having doing me. this. Thank and, you for having um, me. I'm excited. I'm excited for everything. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you for being the best community, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh